Ja. <lacht> All right, walls away at physical therapy, Dom. Finished the metal rack once and for all. It looks sick. And now we have so much floor space in here. Dominic has been jamming. Uh, he just got the streetcar over to the lift and fixed this cut that I had done very crookedly. He said he's still got to straighten out a little bit more. Uh, then we can make some plates, cap these. You can't always eyeball it. You gotta use a straight edge sometimes. Template time! You gotta make templates so you can trace the metal and then cut the metal and then weld the metal in the shape of the template into this place. This is the part where actual skill comes in and I don't do this part. Yo, it's perfect. All right, let's pull some metal from the old metal rack. So our cheap ass Harbor Freight bandsaw broke. So we just had to get a vice grip the, what do you call this, the blade deal? Guide. The blade guide, it should work. a late night when the old fiance cooks you dinner and brings it to the shop. How lucky are we? <laughs> so lucky. Now you can kind of see it coming together a little bit. So this is gonna, this is the bracing for crossbar section. These are the plates for uh, the crash bar to mount up to. So you can see it kind of mount up like that. And then the fuel cell will be in the middle here. So we gotta locate some holes, do some drilling. Should be good. Mark some holes. All right, so if you guys haven't marked holes before with a punch like this, you get a set. And this is, well, this is a cheap one and there's like stuff missing out of it, but there's all different sizes. So you can choose the one that fits in the actual hole that you're going through and it automatically centers it. And then this leaves a little dip or a little divot in the metal. So when we pull this off, the drill bit has something to drill into. So it just makes things a little more accurate and a lot easier. And you're not marking holes with a Sharpie and then drilling in there all blind. Scared the f out of me, dude. Got dumped on God damn, I didn't even hear the gate open. How that how'd you get in here? You slugging slippery mother. <laughs> <laughs> uh so these these plates go in the back here like this. Oh sick. And then that crash bar right there behind you. Oh bolts, what? bolts to this. Dom made it last year for the pro car. Oh, okay. 
So it's just a spare that I had left over. Oh yeah, look at Minty. Oh yeah. There we go, baby. Dom making quick work of this. We got a perfect fit. Oh, damn, dude. It's a little snug. We can maybe grind off a tiny bit. That was pretty damn good. Snug is good. That means I don't even have to hold the thing when you weld it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tight bit. Prime for some welding. We have to get the level on this. We got the beginnings done. This is removable, so on the sides here will be the crash, up, crash bars that are removable, so if you hit a wall, you can just pull this bar off and replace it with a new one. Uh, and that's on both sides. You got the telehook already welded in. Um, and then obviously this, is, this whole thing is replaceable as well. Got a nice jack point right in the rear. So you don't have to get all the way under the diff. The fuel cell mount will be all around here, or the bracing. And then the bumper pretty much rides right in the back of the crash bar. Pretty sick little setup. That's it. Next step. It's my 10 gallon fuel cell. Dominic already took some measurements. He's starting to build out the frame, cut the metal for it. Uh, that is gonna be placed right in here. Over here though, Dominic is setting up some angle cuts for the frame. So that is a 10 gallon. E85 compliant fuel safe fuel cell and that means it comes with a different style bladder so that it can run uh, ethanol and not corrode and and have to be replaced like every single year uh, which is nice so I'm actually not running E85 in that thing anymore I used to for the street car for a short time um, and then we decided to run the VP import instead of their uh, C85 just uh, oh the imports sick it's pretty sweet Framework getting laid out. It's the new TIG welder for race service from Snap On. And uh, Dominic's just getting it dialed in. We got to, took us like three days to get a damn argon tank. So we got the big boy. Give her a test run. Get some metal off that rack over there. Sounds so weird. Definitely sounds weird. Looks like it welds good. It welds fine. Look at that, dude. Looks like you're all warmed up. Square it, always square it. Always level it, always square it. Try to make it look pretty. She's solid, dude. Boom. 
Yeah, so now all we need to do is drill all the holes. Bing, bang, boom. Put some riv nuts in here. Bolt that sucker down and she's good. Then we gotta take it all back out and get everything painted. Just the way it goes. Damien from Auto Explosion uh, down in Gardena and he is gonna spray the interior of this thing once we get it all dialed in. Obviously there's quite a bit more fab to do before we do that, but we're getting there. this perfect fit look at that damn looking minty all right don's drilling some pilot holes uh the metal that don used is thick enough for us to just tap and he found some m6 hardware i have some quarter 20 stuff but um it's all good. We'll just drill it, tap it, be a little easier. And then we got plenty of M6 hardware we're gonna use. And then we'll tap them out. And then we'll get this thing bolted right in. There we go, boys. She all done. She fitted. Everything came out Dom spec. I'm gonna get the rear subframe in and we can take it all apart soon and get it all painted. Probably get this powder coated and then all of this stuff, the frame and all that is gonna get painted by Damien and Auto Explosion along with the interior. Hopefully stripped down the cage. The clear coat I put on didn't last long. It's just gonna all rust it out, but we'll get that dialed in. All right, we're gonna put them out the steering column and we just gotta make the hole a little bigger. Right there, and trim a little bit outside of that. And we just got the uh, plasma cutter hooked up. So we might as well give it a go. Ew. That's a lot cleaner than I thought it was gonna cut. I mean, as long it's as you not move it smooth. Yeah, it's not bad. That was my first time seeing a plasma cutter do something in person. Cool. Definitely saves you some time, but it, it melts the metal, so it doesn't exactly leave a super clean cut. So we're just gonna go over it and clean up the cut with... <laughs> Boom, she's smoothed out. Right now I'm putting a seat in. Uh, we're gonna start getting the steering column kind of in. We already kind of cut our clearance in for the hole for the firewall. Um, and now we gotta get the dash bar in from side to side. Tie the cage together. Um, Dominic is cutting that right now. And then uh, we're gonna see where the steering column lines up with the steering wheel on it, get fitted in a seat, and make sure it's uh, in a comfortable position. Drill chuck going in. It's a five eighths. Yep.
All right, boys, steering column in. We are tacked up. Pull it back out, Dom can finish weld. And we probably have to do another bracket uh, from out there down to there, because this thing is gonna flex up and down quite a bit. Otherwise, she is in a great spot. Great position. Ghetto, but it's working. Yeah, this saw is a rock. All right, we're just going for it. Dash in. It's not like it's hooked up, but you know, just makes the interior look a million times better. 